G'day boys and girls, today we are looking at one of the favourite tools of recent years, a plunge saw. As you can see, this is the Milwaukee plunge saw. Do you want the model number? I don't really need to give you the model number, do I? If you Google Milwaukee plunge saw, I'm sure you will find it. If you walk into a shop and say Milwaukee plunge saw, they're not going to get confused about which one it is. But if you've been to this channel before, you know I like to give you as many details as possible. So this is in this part of the world, the M18 FPS 55, that is M18 because it is an 18 volt tool. FPS stands for fuel, basically brushless, fuel plunge saw and the 55 I'll tell you about shortly. In the States this is known as, let's take a look at some of the features. Plunge lock for changing your blade, blade lock for changing your blade, onboard tool storage for, guess what, changing your blade. And that blade is of course 165 millimeters or six and a half inches. It's variable speed from one through to six or from 2500 RPM to 5600 RPM. It has a scoring function, an easy to move depth of cut setting with the left side here showing you the full depth without the track and the depth with the track. There is a fine adjustment screw for your depth stop the plunge lock release is of course where your thumb is and where your finger is, is a trigger. It can bevel to a maximum of 48 degrees with a stop at 45 and with the use of this knob a stop at 22 and a half degrees. To attain a minus one degree or reverse bevel cut you use this knob, tool then dropped. It's also the same knob you use for when you want to get to 48 degrees. And it has knobs front and back for tightening your bevel angle. It has a rotatable dust port and it comes with a dust bag for that dust port. And the base looks like this. More on that later. So that's a quick look at the features. We'll go into more depth in a moment, but we need to put this saw up against something, don't we? We need to compare it to something. And at least half of you are gonna to wanna to see it up against the Makita or the Festool because those two have been around a long time and they're probably the two most common plunge saws on the market today. But there's also those stupid people watching that will say, that's not fair, you can't put the Milwaukee up against the Festool and the Makita because they're both 36 volt tools and the Milwaukee's only 18 volt. It's just not fair. You can't compare two tools with two different battery voltages. You just can't do it. It's not possible. So for once, I'm going to placate those people and I'm going to put it up against the Metabo KT18 LTX 66 BL 18 volt plunge saw. To change the blade on the Metabo, you bring up your depth setting to the red area here. The picture of the blades, anywhere in that area is fine. Turn this dial, it pops out a small piece of plastic there. Place your tool on the edge of a bench or something similar. Use your thumb to unlock the plunge mechanism and plunge the tool until it clicks into place. The blade is now locked. The screw for changing your blade is accessible. The trigger can't be pulled. The Allen key for changing your blade is kept on the side of the tool. The plunge depth goes down to 66 millimeters. And there is a fine adjustment screw near the handle. To plunge the saw, push this lever forward with your thumb, releases the lock. You can then pull the trigger. It is variable speed, one through to 12, one being 2250 RPM and 12 being 5000. This lever here is your battery release. It has a bevel knob at the back and the front. The front bevel knob also has a button. Push it in and you will drop to minus one. Pop it back up, it will pop out and go back to zero degrees. The same system applies for the maximum bevel. Put your saw up to 45, it will automatically stop. Push in the button, you can now go past to 46 degrees. Go back, the button will pop back out, back at 45. There are also levers front and back for locking in a rip fence. And the base looks like this, more on that later. It has a dust port that locks in lots of different positions. Can also completely remove it. Let's now check the depth of cut between the two tools and then we'll come back and talk a bit more about the features. To make things as fair as possible, I have a bunch of new Milwaukee blades to use on both tools. I have two brand new batteries to be using on these tools. I have the six amp hour high output Milwaukee and the Metabo 5.5 amp hour lithium HD batteries. Both are freshly charged.
So the Milwaukee 59 millimeters, as they state, and the Metabo 66 millimeters, as they state, or just over two and a half inches and just over two and a quarter inches. There is some wild weather going on today, thunder and lightning all over the place. So I'm gonna to have to do some ripping indoors. Ripping, better turn on some more lights too. It's getting dark, weather is miserable. Ripping you say? Yes, ripping with plunge saws. You know me by now, gotta put these things through their paces, eh? Then we'll do some nicer cuts after that. I like how the Metabo tracks have holes pre-drilled in them so that you can screw them down to your workpiece if your workpiece allows. And now we are gonna rip 15 millimeters off the edge of this timber. This is framing timber. It's 45 millimeters thick. And I've got the saw set on about 48 there. So the blade will just drop below our timber. And we will cut a piece of that with both the Metabo and the Milwaukee. Now the depth of cut test and ripping that framing timber was done with 24 tooth blades and there was no problem, both saws did fine with them. For their future tests we're going to swap out now into 40 tooth blades as well as the 24 tooth blade and the 40 tooth blade. We've also got a 48 here, 52 and a fibre cement blade. These are some of the other blades that you can get from Milwaukee. I'm here at Trady Republic, so I figured I would show you some of those extra blades. This is actually the blade that will come with your track saw if you buy it in this part of the world anyway. I say that because in some countries tool companies do different things and sometimes you'll get different size blades depending on where you live. Cutting the framing timber on the track, I could feel the Milwaukee had a bit more power. They both did the job fine. I mean these things aren't really designed for the cutting framing timber. I don't have any sopping wet framing timber to test. I know people love seeing saws put through really wet treated timber but I haven't got any at the moment and this isn't really what these things are designed for anyway. They're designed for cutting up sheet goods and doing nice kitchen work and stuff. They're not designed for ripping long lengths of sopping wet 8 by 2s or anything like that. But as you saw, they cut that dry framing timber no problem at all. And you may have also noticed that I used the Metabo track for both saws. That's to show you that you can use the Milwaukee on the Metabo and you can also use the Metabo on the Milwaukee. But not only that, because of its base design, you can use the Milwaukee on the Makita and the Festool tracks. But there is one caveat and that is I did the cut first with the Metabo on that Metabo track and then when I came to do the Milwaukee cut I noticed some black rubber chips on the track after I'd made the cut. Uh oh. The width from the groove to the blade on the Milwaukee is slightly less than it is on the Metabo and therefore I re-trimmed <laughs> The splinter guard, so now the splinter guard is about a half a millimeter too short for the Metabo in theory. I mean you can still use this track fine, but you've now got that tiny little gap on the edge of the splinter guard between the edge of this blade and the splinter guard. So you need to bear that in mind if you are chopping and changing between saws or tracks. You may end up cutting the splinter guard. And when I use this on my Makita blade it's the other way around. This is further out from the splinter guard. So the Makita track and plunge saw a little bit narrower than both of these because this one is way wider than the Makita track. It runs along it fine but your splinter guard will end up about five millimeters further away. So this sticks out five millimeters past the guard roughly four or five mil. It's quite a lot. 
uh, didn't actually measure it. If you've got a brand new Makita track and you use this saw first then that's fine because it will probably cut the splinter guard to the right place for you but if you've been using Makita stuff first then the splinter guard is not going to be much good for this particular saw. But the Metabo does have other tricks up its sleeve when it comes to the tracks. If we take a look at the base it's got extra grooves than the Milwaukee one has. So you can see here this groove this is the most common sort of way of running on the track and this is the way that Metabo does it, the way that Hikoki does it, Makita, Hilti, Festool. So very common this way of doing things. But if you also notice there is a thin groove down here also. Now if you watched my video on the Mafal saw you will have seen that that ran on a very small groove. And so this is for Bosch and Mafal who use a different track design. While we're looking at the base let's take a look at the adjustments here. So this is to make sure you've got no play in either of your tracks. As you can see got an outer one here for this one and the inner one there. It's all controlled by this one knob at the front. You just turn that back and forward. It sort of clicks quite nicely. It's a very good system. It is better than the system that is on the Milwaukee. So this is a very cool base but there's one thing on here that I can't see that the Milwaukee and Makita have and that is something to stop it from tilting when you have it beveled over to say 45 degrees. Something to stop it from popping off the track. The Milwaukee has this here. It has a push button and a dial on the top. You turn it and it pops out past the edge of the base to slide underneath one of the rails on your track. Doesn't look like it sticks out very far so I hope it grips all right. It may have problems with certain tracks. Maybe it wouldn't work on the Makita or something. It depends. I'll have to have a look. So I guess we should go do some bevel cuts now. I guess before I do that though I should tell you about their little window at the front on the Metabo and why there isn't one on the Milwaukee. So these are designed so you can see the edge of your blade and it's also like a splinter guard. So this moves up and down you can set it to different depths depending on whether you're doing a bevel cut or whether you're using the track or not sort of thing. So we've got it there if you're not using the track pull it down again there's your track depth. This runs along the edge the blades cutting just behind here. This helps stop the edge of your timber from splintering. The other side is of course protected by the track. It is however quite awkward to get back in and I'm not sure how you're meant to do it. And all I've been doing is sort of going like that which doesn't seem all that great to do but I can't find another way of doing it. A bit of a poor design. When we come to the Milwaukee you look at the instructions on any plunge so it'll tell you not to remove this. <laughs> Um, but I was fiddling around with them before I used it and I forgot to put it back in for those cuts you just saw. So the Milwaukee one, that's its highest point, you just pull down, it clicks into place and you can just click it back up. If you want to remove it, push this pin in at the top. So the Milwaukee also comes with this one which is more of a splinter guard than the clear one is or the clear one on the Metabo. So you slide it in place, this one has a thumb screw, so do that up. And now you can set that to absolutely any angle you want because you've got the control of the screw. This is designed to be cut through just like the splinter guard on your rail. So once you put in the blade you're going to use, put this on here, if you're doing some nice fine work, you'll then plunge this through and cut so you get a perfect edge on this piece of plastic here. And that should help track side and non-track side from splintering. First up I better break in the Milwaukee track. Hope I don't stuff this up because it is a good looking track. When it comes to doing full 45 degree bevels with track saws it pays to clamp down your track. These slot underneath most guide rails and just give you that extra grip. This is a quick slide and ratchet style. This is your classic F clamps sort of style with the screw. Now with the Milwaukee and its lever for holding it on the track here to stop it from tipping off, all good and well but doesn't work too well here on the Makita track. It's, um, it fits under there but it catches and grinds a bit, see it's a bit, she's a bit stiff, it's not quite the right size. Maybe if you took a little bit off the top of it or you ran a file through your guide rail 
you might be able to make that run a little bit smoother. So you might be able to get away with it on the Makita, but the Metabo, no hope at all because they don't have this extra piece on the side here that the Makita and Milwaukee have. So nothing there for you to grip onto. Is that gonna be a problem with the Metabo? Let's take a look. So now we come to the Metabo and we have the problem I thought it would have. It will not sit on a 45. Not even close. If you do up the knob to tighten it, it'll hold it there, but only if you do it up so tight that the saw won't slide. Oh, but that's the Milwaukee track. Okay, then let's try it over here. Oh, bloody camera got caught. Exactly the same issue on the Metabo track. It is not going to be good for doing 45 degree cuts. Right, how much do each of these tools weigh? With the factory blade on, no battery, 4.345 kgs. And the Milwaukee comes in at 4.14. So 200 grams lighter for the Milwaukee. You can actually feel it when you pick it up, that does feel a little bit lighter. When it comes to the cut quality on the Malamine board here that I did, which is MDF with a tough coating on it, which might be called Laminex or something else where you are, and it chips quite easily, but it did pretty well. Both saws did good with the um, Milwaukee blade on most of the cuts, but if I take a look at this one here, we can see that this edge, pretty damn rough. The roughest cuts came from the Metabo factory blade. The blade that came with this saw didn't seem anywhere near as good as the Milwaukee blades and the treated pine framing that I cut came up real nice beautiful cut nice and smooth and that was just with the 24 tooth blade that's the advantage of having a track keeping everything dead straight so there's no wiggle in your hand as you're pushing your saw along manually it gives you those nice clean cuts when you are doing 45s make sure you sort of hold the base down against your track especially if you haven't got your track clamped else your track is going to tip up and your saw is going to come away from the track and give you an angle that is not the one you desired. That goes for both saws, even though the Milwaukee has the anti-tip thing that I showed you. It is right at the back. And so in the shot that I put in the video, you'll see if you look carefully, some of you probably already noticed, that the front of the saw was just tilting up a little bit because I was doing it one-handed, just relying on that anti-tip feature. But basically you can't use it for cutting. It's good so that you can let go of the saw whenever you want and it's not going to fall onto the ground like this one will. Um, but for cutting, still need that downward pressure on the base. And when you're doing a 45, that basically means you need to do it on the actual base itself because the saw's tilted over so far that the top handles don't work that great when you're on a 45. I will do a video in the future on the differences between like using a plunge saw and a normal circular saw and which one you should buy and which ones are best for you and yada yada yada. Um, but we'll leave it there for today. Now, looking at the tracks, I like the length of the Metabo track here, the 1600 long one. Gives you a bit more extra overhang at the ends compared to a 1.4 meter track like the Milwaukee and the Makita ones are. However, if you stuck two 1600s together, you end up with like 3.2 meters, which is a bit too big for doing sheet goods. So it's, it's kind of an awkward size. It's good by itself. Add them together, not that much good. But you can add a short one such as this 800 millimeter long one, but that brings you to 2.4 meters, which is the exact length of a sheet. So once again, 
a little odd, not that great, but they do have nice connectors which slot in like so, nice and easy. And then you do up these cam screws here. Just give them a tweak and you're locked in. It's pretty good. It's better than having to flip the track over like you do with the Makita and the Milwaukee ones, a bit more solid. Although, Metabo, I have an issue because this one has a slightly different profile. This one has a sloped side and a grooved side. This one does not. They're both basically just sloped, I think. And this doesn't fit, it will not go in there. It's too tight, it's too narrow, no matter which way you put this upside down, wherever, it will not go in this track. So I don't know if this is an older track and it, they've changed the design. So it's a bit annoying because you get one of those, you think it's gonna fit in here, and it doesn't. Now Matabo also make a 2.5 meter track, which I also think is a little bit of an odd size. You know, I want a bit more than 50 mil hanging over each end. And they also do a 3.1 meter. I like the long tracks because it means you can put something like this this behemoth of a Makita, 270 millimeter blade. I can put that on the track and get the good run in that you need because you can't plunge this. Well, you can, but you know, it doesn't have a plunge mechanism. So you need to come into the front of your piece of timber. So you want this on the track, but off the timber. So you want that nice run in from the track. And with that 1600, it gives you that option. But yeah, just remember you can buy really long ones, 3.1 meters, and then cut it to exactly the length you want if you want. So you could get a 3.1 and then cut it down to make two that are the right size for you, say two 1500s or a 2.7 and, and a 400, you know, whatever you want. You don't have to stick with the sizes they give you because the ends are not special or anything. They don't have anything special about them. You can just cut them wherever you want and it's still a track. And Tim from Trady Republic wants me to see if we can connect a Milwaukee track and a Makita track together with a set of Makita joiners here and see whether this Milwaukee saw will run over both tracks in a nice straight line, no little judder bumps or anything like that. But we're running out of time, I'm afraid, Timmy boy. So I'll do that in another video. I'll stick it up on builds and stuff in the top corner up here. Probably won't be ready by the time this video is finished, but at some point it'll be up there or look down in the description and you'll see my channel builds and stuff. Right, let's take a bit more of an in-depth look at some of the features on these tools and what I do and do not like about them. I'm gonna get a bit brutal here. Both of these saws, they cut nice, they do the job, they both got plenty of power. Milwaukee is slightly more powerful, um, but yeah, they do the job. But there's some things I don't like about them and I'm gonna tell you what they are. So this, the Metabo, has no tilt stop, we've established that. This is rubbish, trying to get it back in. We've established that. This handle, the front handle on the tool, is rubbish. It is held on by one screw. It's not molded with the rest of the tool. So it warbles from side to side and back to forward. Comes loose very easily, as does the Hikoki. So that's just cheap and weak feeling. And also it's tapered and it's made of a very slippery plastic. And the tool is weighted to the front. So when you pick it up, it goes like that and your hand just wants to slide straight off. Just, that's what my hand does. And that's where I go to pick it up when I'm just picking it up. You know, you, sort of, you don't pick it up like that when you just want to move it from somewhere, you just grab that handle. And if you don't grab it real tight, if you just casually grab it and you lift it and that goes like that, your hand just wants to slide straight off. It's just a bit crap. Whereas the Milwaukee one is TP over molded and it is very grippy. Spring. As you see when I was just pushing the plunge down, the spring is very strong on the Milwaukee, perhaps a little bit too strong. Um, so the Metabo is nicer in that regard to plunge probably. The Metabo definitely has a nicer handle here. So the front handle might be crap, but this one much better, much nicer shape, much more comfortable in the hand, much better for the plunge release at the top here. It, you can push it up with your whole thumb and you know it feels right and the trigger's nice. Whereas the Milwaukee, it's a it's a, like a square button, and instead of sort of sliding it up like you do with many other saws, like the one I just showed you, you sort of push it in. And so if you sort of go like that, which I, I'm used to doing, of doing that, if you go like that, you sort of push your thumb into this extraordinarily sharp edge on the plastic here. So yeah, that's it's just, and it's a bit more vertical, not quite as comfortable as the Metabo. Here's a small one. I don't like this vent being on the top. I never like vents being on the top of things. You know, it's just, 
you can see all the wires and the circuit board in there and all the dust and shit just going to go straight in the top of there very easily. I don't like the battery system but that's kind of a completely separate issue with Metabo in general, not this particular tool. This one does not have a scoring function. The scoring function worked really nicely on the Milwaukee, so it's a shame they didn't bother putting that on the Metabo. Score cut test. Pretty darn good. And the only other thing that's sort of different to the Milwaukee really is this area here where you lock your blade and I do not like it. In theory it seems cool but it's a bit too convoluted, there's too many moving parts, there's too many things to go wrong and this I think is, a, is the weakest point of this saw. And we'll say push it up to the position, you can do that like this or when it's locked that will not go down but it will go up. The Milwaukee's the same. So when you lock that and you turn that out and then you plunge the thing, there's too many things to go wrong and they don't feel very strong and have already had issues. And that I think is a bad feature the way they've done it. The Milwaukee one is much simpler. I know the Mafal and the Festool, you know, they have nice fancy systems for getting the blades off, but a simple spindle lock with your finger is far more foolproof. And that's what the Milwaukee's got, and that's what the Makita's got, and I, I prefer that as opposed to something too convoluted. I do like the Mafal one though, where you push a button in the side of the handle, locks your blade, you then pull a lever, which releases the whole front of the saw so that you can access the whole blade. It's a much better system than these ones where you have to half plunge it and lock it in position and then try and feed your blade in and out especially on the Milwaukee because this one has got something we haven't spoken about that the Metabo also does not have. The Milwaukee you can plunge and lock right down at the bottom of its range past where you would normally do the blade so that you can do the riving knife. So you've got a screw in there so you can adjust the riving knife. So the riving knife not on the Metabo, only on the Milwaukee. So I haven't had any problems with that yet. I can see it's got a little bit of play in it, but I haven't had it catch or anything. So, so far so good. I'm not a huge fan of riving knives. I know, yeah, it's a safety issue, yada yada, but they can cause other problems and they can cause the opposite of safety issues. So some saws have them, some don't. Some people love them, some people hate them. I'm not gonna take it off unless it causes me a problem. So if you like riving knives, well then the Milwaukee's got another one up over the Metabo. The dust port is better on the Metabo. For one reason alone really in my opinion well it kind of locks in nicely on different angles a little bit better than the milwaukee which is just tight all the way around um, but this one i can hook up to a dust extractor the milwaukee on the other hand has an odd sized port which none of the eight fittings i had went over you couldn't get one of these inside like you can on the metabo nothing went over the top of it either so a couple of pieces of duct tape just to make that a bit bigger and then I was able to put that one on. That slots on quite nicely now. But this would normally require, see it's got that groove there, a special fitting from Milwaukee that clips on, sort of locks in place. Um, but I don't have one of those. And it's annoying having to buy that $30 thing just to clip on here when I have so many other attachments from other vacuums that fit on everything else but don't fit on this. Now if you're in the US you're going, what? Mine doesn't look anything like that. In the US I've noticed this is just smooth, doesn't have the lock in one and this style of attachment will go straight inside. So I don't know why they decided to do it different in this part of the world. Like I said tool companies do different things in different parts of the world for one reason or another. Some of them I can get, some of them I don't get. Now a couple of other things the Milwaukee's got over the Metabo, the um, splinter guard area here at the front much better on the Milwaukee than it is on the Metabo. The Milwaukee has the 22.5 detent set there on the front, Metabo doesn't have that. The Milwaukee feels quicker and more powerful than the Metabo and when it comes to changing blades, you know how the tool storage is basically crap on most tools, they have a space on board tool storage and it's got an allen key in it, you stick it inside of your saw, you know, and then a week later when you want to change the blade you go to get it and it's gone, who knows where, in the mud somewhere on site. Who would know?
they rattle out, disappear, that's that. Well, I don't think you'll have the problem with this one because boy oh boy, is it stuck in well. It is the tightest mounted onboard tool storage I have ever experienced. It's also right by your hand. So you've got your hand basically over it a lot of the time. So if it starts coming out, you're gonna notice it pretty quick. You'll see it or you'll feel it. So you're very unlikely to lose that as long as you keep it on the tool, of course, um, than you would with the Metabo or any other saw, pretty much. And one more thing to mention about the Milwaukee. How does it go with a 12 amp hour battery? Can you see any problems here? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know where, you, where your hand's supposed to go. Um, yeah, with a 12 amp hour battery, she is rather awkward. The front handle is not usable to wrap your hand around. You can still sort of push down on it or push down on the battery and just forget the handle. Put your palm on this area and your fingertips over the top, like so. But yeah, the battery placement on the Milwaukee is not the greatest. Um, I know it's tricky with a plunge saw to know where to put the batteries, but yeah, with the big batteries, even the six amp hour high output I was using is a bit close sticks out a long way up here so yeah they could have made that a little bit more elegant and out of the way would have been nice but i do admit there's not a lot of places you could put it especially a battery that size this has the um the locks on it for your rip fence that the milwaukee doesn't have it it's got the holes to screw it in and everything but they don't actually give you the thumb screws with it okay so i think that's now roughly it there's so many things to talk about with plunge saws it could this video could be three times as long if we ran into the depth of how nice the cuts are and setting all the splinter guards and everything perfectly. And there's lots of things you can talk about with these things and lots of cuts you can do. And it's, uh, yeah, they they take a long time to video. But that is the Metabo KT18 LTX 66BL. It's a bit of a mouthful. And the Milwaukee M18 FPS 55. Oh, I haven't told you the depth of cut on a 45. You're going to want to know that, aren't you? So the Metabo is 43 millimeters on a 45, so just a couple of millimeters short of being able to do framing timber in this part of the world, but that's still a lot better than the Milwaukee, which you're looking at like about 36 millimeters on a 45. So no good for framing timber on 45 degrees, that's for darn sure. But as I said earlier, not really designed for framing timber, these are for sheet goods. Did I tell you about the dust extraction? I found the Milwaukee probably slightly better without these in place. The Metabo certainly fired out a lot more rubbish, and on a 45 this fired out a lot more than the Milwaukee, but when they're all set perfectly, they're pretty close. But I think the Milwaukee just slightly better. Don't bother with the dust bags for both of them. They just fill up way too fast. Ideally, with the stuff you're probably cutting, and with the way these run, and with the way they're so close to you, and you, it's a good chance you're indoors with these tools as well, you want dust extraction. You want a vac hooked up to them and yeah makes your life much nicer right are we done have i run out of things to say i know there'll be something that i've forgotten but i know you'll tell me what that was down in the comments so which one would you go for the green one or the red one i'll tell you which one i'd go for if i had to choose only one if i was only gonna keep one of these tools it would be the red one for sure it just I just preferred using it and I prefer the feature designs on this one over this one So yeah, I don't normally say which one I prefer but hey, that's the one But if you are interested in the green one and you're interested in seeing it up against its other green brother The High Koki or if you're in the States the Metabo HPT Metabo versus Metabo HPT aren't they the same thing? Well subscribe and in a few days time you can take a look at that video and see what is the same and what is different between these two tools, these two companies, these two companies, these one company. Well, make sure you subscribe and I'll see you back in a couple of days for that video. Until then, thanks for watching right to the end and I'll see you on another video soon, be it this one or one of the other ones. Subscribe and you'll get them all. Cheers guys.